Right on. How are we doing? How are we doing? Are you seeing me? We see you fine. Fantastic. All right. So it's kind of a challenge for me because I'm very animated. Uh, but Kim, Marion, thanks for the awesome introduction. Um, I've been doing this since 1993. Uh, and I think you might understand that I really like my work by the end of this talk here. Let's move right into it. So since 1993, I've done over 220 projects of restoration types from pikeet habitat, frog, grizzly bear, um, turtle. We do a lot of salmon habitat restoration, a lot of uh, uh, wetland, waterfowl restoration. But also, I understand this is planting, but that all goes together. So the planting we do is just as uh, rewarding and, and exciting. So there's kind of a little profile of, of just the work that we've done um, and kind of the area. And we go out and we monitor it. So that seems to be foreign. So don't misunderstand that uh, contractors are out just to go make a buck. Uh, this is my lifestyle. And I, I don't go on vacation. Uh, I go down to uh, Moapa Valley, and I check on the speckled date. So I want to help you guys all plan a really good package. Um, the most critical thing for a contractor, whether they're building a, a, a big construction project or just planting, you, you really need to express what the clear goal is. So you, you've been consumed by this project for 10 years planning it, but did you really think about access, cycle times on how to get to the site, <laughs> How are you going to get the materials to the site? Did you have a specialty item uh, of a really freaky paint that you're going to put on the handrail for a, a, a viewing platform? Might take a couple weeks to order. Or, or were you planning on um, a water control structure being replaced in a certain phase, and then you're going to plant on another phase? So thinking through the logistics of how the project is going to be done, um, is really important at the very beginning of putting your package together. When you're thinking through those things too, and you're putting your, your budget together and your timeline together, have you thought about all the delays? Last year we were shut down for 9, 10, 13 days or so because of fire season. That was a major impact, major impact. And it's, I'm still recovering from it for myself. For myself. There's a funny little thing called public events. I'll, I'll highlight one uh, later on in the presentation. Did you anticipate that? Might be going through your project during the construction time. Uh, it, might, it might sound really silly, but uh, in a pre-work meeting, I always ask my project team, who's going on vacation? <laughs> it, it doesn't seem to be silly. But when you're in the heat of battle, battle out there and you're trying to make something happen and then your main key decision maker goes on vacation, that's a bummer. So um, planning planning that, it, it seems like uh, it's mom and, and putting socks in the, the drawer, but holy cow, you really need to think about everybody that is part of your project team. Uh, weather is always a hot topic. What's what's your weakest link out there? Have you thought through the strengths and the, uh, the downsides? Have you thought what's going to be great? What's 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 your worst nightmare? So thinking through all of that, um, being careful with uh, have a nice clean package with uh, standards and steps, and speaking clearly so that. Um, a patchwork quilt of people can understand what you're talking about, which is perfect with this next slide. I don't know the age group of my folks here, but this is the March Brothers Day at the Races. So, um, this is exactly what I'm talking about, putting a clear package together. And you're all wondering, what the heck is she talking about? Why, you're just throwing your money away unless you have the Breeders' Guide. Okay, so just a little background on this skit. Uh, the Marx Brothers, um, Groucho's going up and he's going to go bet on a horse. And Chico's there pretending that he's selling ice cream, but he's actually selling 
different pieces of uh, information so that he can bet on a horse and win. So first he gets the uh, the horse information, and then he gets the the training information, and then he gets the breeder information, and it's just a gobbledygook, crazy little thing. And I I encourage everyone <laughs> to check out this little video and and watch this skit. And and you're thinking, what does this have to do with my project? But it is exactly what I'm talking about. <clears throat> We have several government agencies, several types of uh, uh, plans and specs. And um, if you are using City of Portland specs and an Army Corps spec and an ODOT spec or a Fish and Wildlife spec and you put it all in the same contract, make sure that you have a clear path to follow that because it's really hard for a contractor to take page one of one spec and page 55B of another spec and put it all together and understand what your expectations is. So that the expectation from the contractor is that you have your ducks in a row. So if you have your ducks in a row and you have a clear package, you will gain so much immediate respect and admiration that you got your poop in a group. Sorry, but it really makes it makes the project go smoother. What do we need to know when we go out on a on a contractor site visit? Now you've seen my uh, profile. I do all different types of construction and I do planting, but this really applies to all construction. So be really specific if your site visit is mandatory. Uh, I, I know price range is always a a, a a sticky topic, but if you give a range, then the contractor kind of knows what to expect as far as um, your logistics, your products, uh, your anticipation of machinery, your anticipation of manpower. Uh, and, and so it's not meant to um, under, undermine anything or have any kind of collusion of any sort. It's meant to make it a fair playing field when you're applying for bonding, when you're bidding against uh, a, a crowd of other contractors. It, it just gives a good, fair range. Um, make, making sure your instructions are really clear on how you want to submit. A lot of our projects that we bid are uh, proposal-based. So there's a three-point checklist, typically. And I like to follow exactly the checklist and give exactly what you're asking. And if you're comparing Johnny Backhoe that does sewer lines and is going to whack in a couple willows on the side, huh, that's the bid you got. But if you want somebody that really is going to have the fish-friendly hydraulic fluid, take care of the environment as they're doing the servicing, and know that we're putting Sitka's in and Mackenzie's. Uh, most most Johnny Backhoes don't know that. So make sure your planning's clear and giving instructions. You're having a site visit? Again, back to the clear goals. Please, please, please talk through what the goal of the project is. It doesn't, um, it doesn't help when you get clustered up with a whole bunch of uh, vocabulary that uh, some contractors do get, some contractors don't. I, I like to quote a lot of Janine Castro stuff, and, and she talks about how to talk in, a, in um, different environments. And it's just amazing that people get lost in the, and lost in the weeds, shall we say, in this one. Um, but if you're talking to engineers, there's different language. Biology is different languages. Regulars, different ones. Contractors, just just be clear and offer up all of your reports because some of them, your serious ones, are going to want to read them. Um, the Jedi mind tricks thing. That's that's really um, comes from a PSU colleague of ours in teaching, and, and it was really fun to hear that uh, several of the agency folks that I know 
that go out and do site visits. They're terrified of all the contractors. They think that they're doing these Jedi mind tricks to try to trip them up on their um, on their specs or, or their planning or whatever. But no, that is definitely not the case. The contractors are always trying to see how organized you are. Uh, are you going to be a good customer because you know what you want and you're very clear with your expectations? That is what they're looking for from you. But from the rest of the contractors, we're trying to, the jet of mind tricks is more along the lines of, we're scoping out all the contractors. I always put on my little bid sheet as I'm walking around, how many Ford pickups that I have to bid against. And so um, one, another last topic on this is, do, do not allow the contractors to run you. If you set a mandatory site visit, and it is in LaGrande, and it is, Born down or there's slide or whatever. Don't reschedule it and make two. If your batch of con if you have nine contractors that make it to your site meeting and one contractor whines and cries and says, Well, I can't make it because there was a slide in the road. Well, by gosh, if that contractor wants to bid on your job, he's gonna jump on a UFO and it fly to your site. So don't let that guy control you. It's unfair to the rest of them. And usually the guy that gets the second meeting is the low bid, and then you're in trouble from there. When you're thinking of your your uh, project and layout and logistics, this is a fantastic project. But I tell you what, if I'm doing a construction project where I have to use a helicopter to get my materials up to the site, and it's a really tight budget, and it's 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 a fantastic job. I have zero complaint about this project, but my customer did not realize that <clears throat> we're working on a flashy, flashy high, high flow stream, and in the winter time when it's time to plant, how am I supposed to access the areas where I just helicoptered all of my uh, structures in and put my logs, my logs in the water with helicopters and and lower with excavators? We had. Uh, a real safety concern getting across with our planting crew because w because of the environmental restraints, but because of high water and a lot of other things, the logistics of getting 10,000 plants across a high flow river with no other access. That's and then you want the the lowest cheapest price. So we did it, we got it done, but it was a really tough one. So thinking through those kind of things is really important. Uh, project team. This this project team it was an uh, amazing one. We did um, waterfowl habitat down in uh, Tule Lake and it was such a great success because there was just seamless communication with our our partners and all the stakeholders on the site. You can't tell in that crew who's crew and who's the stakeholder and who's my who's my boss and who's the who's the um, environmental consultant. We all made decisions together. We didn't try to overlap each other and and override each other. All of our decisions were made as a team. We shared the credit, and that is so unusual. There's time after time after the 200 projects that we have done where our company doesn't get recognized. And our the kids that work for me, they they really love the kudo. It doesn't affect me as much, but for other kids to see that the future of the work that we do really matters, um, that, that credit is really an important factor in their growth and their development and their careers. And so having that optimism really helps. I'm going to go really quickly through this since you guys are not into restoration in the water, but again, this is a, a partnership thing, um, design, a design that I question and we talked through some of our experience and it was a kind of an experimental project, which a lot of it did not hold, but we followed along, we contributed and we constructed and they studied. And it's, it's a place that I take uh, students out almost every year since 1999 doing um, repairing investigation and restoration 
studies here, but these uh, the top two structures completely failed. And but I I drew attention to the the engineer that there was this really cool little pool that would help in our side channel. So we designed another prod uh, the same side channel or pool at the top here on the left um, is me at that same pool. We put a sill in it and some other work on it, and that sill is still performing as we designed, and it's still backwatering that side channel. So a combination of the math and the science and all the stuff from the engineers, but the experience of your contractor, just believe in it. Do that collaboration. You will have success if you work continuously on the relationship of that partnering. Going south, east or west, holy cow. So I had one contracting officer that um, come out on the site and, and um, gave me this hour-long lecture on a project that was going to go either north or south based, based on how I was going to behave. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's going to help. Um, but he, he was very, 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 very tough, Army Corps, heavy accent, big man, very intimidating to little old Kim. But I worked so hard, and I was um, on top of my game. Things can go south when you don't plan at the very be beginning to be open. There's this there's this secret meetings, cone of silence, the, the shareholders and the agency and the funders and all these things. If, if there's plan changes or whatever the case may be, make sure that you're giving clear information, it's not misinformation, and you, you eliminate that cone of silence. Make your contractor part of the team. It's not a secret. They're not the enemy. There is no glass bubble that you're around, and they're not trying to do anything different or deceptive or anything like that. Uh, credibility with the contractor. So, like, if if we do a, a planting plan and, and submit a pallet, making a quick choice or talking through them and, and turning that information around quickly. Just an example of planting mice, but if you got um, – painting on a on a handrail that's going to take three months to get the paint ordered and the and the powder coating gosh we need to turn that to the middle around like right away so that we can have that timing and we can have that successful duration on the project payment is always uh one that's difficult especially when we're in the heat of the season and pushing through most uh most contractors, like myself, we are we are more into uh, the digging and the planting and the moving of the rocks and the and where where things go and and making it just right. We're not we're trying to track as much as we can, but when we submit our payrolls, when we submit our time cards, where we submit our load receipts or our bills of lading on the on the plants. <clears throat> Make sure that there's a clear avenue of everything that you need to process that payment. And understand that we are paying our vendors, we're paying our payrolls, and it's weekly. It's our, our, our diesel fuel. Um, it's a bummer for me when I have diesel fuel that gets uh, asked to pay every, every week, but I get delay in a payment that comes out 60 days or 65 days when you expect it and 30. So, Payment causes um, a, a, a bias that it, it hurts in your soul, and and it and you know that the money is there, but people kind of they're so they act so funny about it, and it's just a real thing to talk through, um, and and that rolls into like negotiations and change orders. A lot of contractors are change order mongers. You need to know that at the very beginning, but. A lot of times, you do find a change of conditions on the site. And if you establish a great working relationship and set the ground rules at the beginning, when you dig up that Volkswagen in your fill, you, you know how to deal with it together and work on that really tight. But then also, as you're negotiating that, and then all of a sudden, wow, we just dug up a Volkswagen in the middle of our site. 
<clears throat> if we have to change our schedule and we have to accelerate on something, to have that relationship, to talk through the change of how that stops the pro project. We've got to have a crane to come out and get a whatever, a, a Volkswagen out of the field. Changing up that that situation is is natural and to have that partnership relationship and discuss how are we going to deal with it? How does the acceleration affect all of us? It's just communication. So <clears throat> when my contracting officer came out on my job site <clears throat> and he thought, Damn, is this job going north or is it going south? And he's like really yelling at me and he's a big, big guy. And I just took the Sandy River Delta Dam out. And I spoke up to him and I said, sir, this job is not going north and it's not going south. This is the Sandy River and it goes east and west right here. So he just chuckled and he just walked away and he gave me uh, the end result of that job. I had an outstanding rating. So challenges. Um, earlier on, we had a. I'm going to try to pull another little picture across really quick. I had this site this site map on an earlier slide, um, and it has this beautiful palette of um, of plants that go in. This is a, a multi-million dollar um, industrial park, but we got the restoration planting, but the phasing of it. <laughs> There's a water control structure on it. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to keep on going back to it. Um, so this is a giant, giant general contractor phasing the project. The first thing he does is he doesn't phase it so that the water control structure is taken out quite right. So if you're working with a big, big group of stakeholders and you're doing this massive project for town, and you're and you and you're so excited about uh, just your planting plan. Well, think about the logistics of the industrial park itself. Uh, the photo clip to the far right, this job challenge. Hey, they didn't take the water control structure, and I had five feet of water out on my planting site. Okay, now we get the water out. But then go to the far left photo. This general contractor took about. 200 acres of reed canary grass and tilled it up for my topsoil. <clears throat> we we couldn't do anything <laughs> reed canary grass in my topsoil. So the photo in the middle is my crew uh, trying to make the best of it. We're trying to plant in a completely saturated situation with a reed canary grass base. So that was a, it, it, you need to trust that you're, Subcontractors and your general contractors need to get together, need to trust them, and try to come up with uh, logistics. Um, other job challenges and planning. Um, earlier I talked about a potential um, public event. The picture to the far left is uh, just a little sign saying, hey, yeah, I'm going to have a trail close. <clears throat> If anybody is familiar with the um, annual race, I don't even know how long it's been going. It's called the Hood to Coast Relay. Uh, you might think about if that's going to go through your project site because uh, Hood to Coast Relay took off and was just about to go through our job site. <clears throat> and that's all there was for detour signs. So really planning those kind of things. Um, the center photo is the same job site, and this is Oak Bottom on the Willamette River. So our access was by trail and rail and barge. Planning to get out on the barge is really important. So if you have all your inspections and everything for planting and the final pieces, just know when that last excavator, when all the people give you a thumbs up and you're good to go, and that last excavator crawls through, the box culvert and jumps on that barge, it's too late to change your mind where the stumps and rocks are moved. So, um, far right photo is beavers causing havoc, but I didn't think they caused havoc. I just used them to help us with our dewatering. Um, LKE's had to come up with a lot of solutions over the years, just kind of randomly. Uh, this is another project that's Pretty major project on the Toodle River. <laughs> Army Corps puts out a, a, a project for us, and they they say, yeah, Kim, can, can you just move the river to dewater the work zone? 
nothing in the specs, nothing at all what to do. So we had to come up with this bizarre plan. I had to move the Tudor River. What I did is uh, took a helicopter ride and did some planning and did a bunch of log structures moving this river over temporarily. And then I have a series of ditches that we dug just to suck the water down out of our work zone. So coming up with solutions, let your contractor do it. But um, if you've got an idea of what you want to do to do water on the site, you might want to put it in the specs. It makes it um, uh, easier for your contractor to figure out and cheaper for the project. So it's, again, that professional team, that working relationship. This is my favorite, favorite contracting officer of all time. She's my first one from clear back in the early, early 90s. She called me up and we were doing, uh, she was getting ready to retire and had a very complicated project on the uh, Lake Chelan. It was a three-year project, and we got it done based on the relationship. The challenges were really hard. The first year of the design work, we had a 50% failure um, in their designs, and then we worked together the second year and revised their designs together. And by the third year, we had a 90% success. Makes, a lot, makes the job easier, and she was in bliss when she retired. So contractors do care, just like I said earlier, there's uh, <clears throat> over 220, 230 projects, and we go out on, uh, we go out and check them out a lot. We, we take the dogs, go walk in, we check on the plants, we check on the logs, and, and, <clears throat> and it's an amazing thing that I keep calling my fish bios, my botanists, my soil scientists, my CORs, and I ask them, I say, hey, we're going out to Deep Creek, let's go for a walk. And no one has the funding, the, the, the authority, or, or even the capacity to go on their personal weekends. And to me, that is so, just rips my heart in half, because I spend almost all of my personal weekends monitoring these sites. And if this is a, something that you're really, truly living, then we're, we're all investing in it together, and it's a really important thing. So a little bit about my day. Um, I, I have a, a lot on my plate, and I like to go to be in the field. I help out with the crew. I run all the equipment. But I make priorities every single day. And, and it's really important to have structure and organization in your day. This is just my day as far as I have a day sheet. I write it down. Even if I'm sitting here at the desk, what am I going to delegate? How am I going to manage my 200 emails a day? Um, and how am I going to get to the next great restoration project? So with that, hopefully I'm close on the time. And I guess take her back away, Heather. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, you finished early. So um, do we have any questions? We'll just give, um, give our, ourselves a few minutes for folks to ask any questions that they might have. Just go ahead and put those in your Q&A box um, and send them to all panelists. If you, don't ha if you weren't able to find your Q&A box, you can send those, you can put them in the chat as well. We will, I will look at those. So I left my screen. Is that still correct, Heather? Uh, yeah, that's fine. It's not a very exciting screen that everybody's looking at, but that's okay. <laughs> Katie, are you, uh, you're unmuted, aren't you? I just unmuted myself, yes. We did have a question come in in the Q&A box. Um, was the Tootley project with Lower Columbia Fish Enhancement Group? Uh, no, it was not. Um, we did that job with the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, that one was, uh, we did 14 island forming structures uh, that were piling with multiple um, root wad logs kind of uh, 
woven in and then planted around. That was the largest uh, planting uh, posts that I'd ever put in, and they were actually really successful. And also the cross valley structure was that crazy grid looking thing that looked like a giant buffalo corral. It seems, uh, and actually I, I heard that um, natural system design was one of the contributors or something early on. Um, Tim Abbey's a part of that group. That, that was one of the structures that actually Tim had designed and it is a, a it catches sediment and it weaves it through that crazy grid and it turned in making a stair step. There was also a, a giant geotube uh, diversion dam that helped a backwater in another side channel. So all that area was planting and it was done by the Army Corps and um, there's been successive planting and some other projects up there. Uh, I'll ask a question until someone types one in. Uh, this is Heather. Um, what's your most exciting project that you're working on right now? Oh my gosh, that I'm working on right now? Um, well, currently today the crew is all up uh, on a Navy base. We are on a environmental task orders for the Navy. But my my favorite project that we're on currently, it's not in construction right now, but uh, it was last summer and it'll go into this summer is the Stiagra Wild Wildlife Refuge. Um, it's, um, we're working with uh, the Estuary Partnership and Rachi to remove the levees along the Columbia and open up the um, wetland out there. We've done a series of uh, log structures on the, on the north side of Highway 14 and preparing to do uh, a, several channels on the south side of Highway 14. And right now, Gibbons Creek is in this elevated levee thing. It's the most goofy whatever. And, and so we get to pull a, a, the channel back out of this crazy levee, and they take this levee down and out, and I'm making a new stream channel. And uh, there's been just a ton of planting already done out there. A bunch of log structures that have been done out there already, and um, it, that's probably the most exciting one that I'm working on currently. Awesome. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, one came in the chat here, and it says, "Do you have any advice for field fit projects that are bidded for a certain number of machine hours?" Field fit. Um, so. Uh, just making sure, I'm assuming that's kind of like uh, time and materials and that you have a, an engineer or a botanist or soil scientist directing the work, I'm assuming is the question. Um, I guess is the question more along the lines of, is that a good way to go by field fitting by T&M? I try to myself. I guess I'll. I'm guessing that's the question. Uh, yes, you did respond. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, all right. When I. Whew. Okay. So most of the time, a construction contractor or a planting contractor that is really, really super savvy about the work that they do, they they try to target projects that are more. Um, more of a hard bid along the lines of lump sum or unit prices or things like that. When, and then with a combination of time and materials added in there, it's, it's great to have that, <laughs> that full um, opportunity to shine at doing something that we can be really efficient at but then also having an open spot where you have to feel fit. It is so fun when you open up an area and you and you figure it out together as a team. I mean, <clears throat> engineer with science and installed by with art. I mean, I'm telling you, it it that does mesh really well. But <clears throat> honestly, contractors will shy away from a project that is just bid as time and materials because what that tells us is that <clears throat> you haven't really thought through the project, so you're just going to throw money at it. 
and I hope you have a good operator that goes out there and you're just going to tell the dumb hamburger head what to do. And, and so you feel like, okay, y you you don't have an opportunity to really shine and and be a part of something that 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 you, you put your mind and heart and soul in. And so you can just throw out any old Johnny Backhoe operator <clears throat> and and they are directed by the Einstein out there. So hopefully that answers that. I, I like to I like to see a full full range uh, and a lot of the folks that are in my field like to see that 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 we have unit prices, that we have lump sum options, but then you do have that time and materials opportunity to work side by side and and create something really amazing together. Thanks, Kim. Um, another question is, have you ever had an experience with a materials provider wanting to place a lien up front rather than requesting a deposit from the contractor or client? Uh, yeah, yes, that, that's actually standard. So we've been, we've been really fortunate because we've been doing this work for about 30 years. So you have established, uh, established business relationships um, with main vendors, so whether it's whether it's plants or seeds or or logs or a box culvert, um, it, it's it's something that's stand, industry standard, and and things are so weird. It's, it's like um, it's like COVID hit all the vendors kind of thing. <laughs> but um, so an example would be I've been doing. Uh, fish friendly box culverts for a long time and, and this this last year we had to put deposits down and crazy things on box culvert vendor and even the customer would not the fed highways would not even fund it until it got installed and and then we had the fire shutdown and here i have a site that's all opened up ready to do a stream channel through and put a box culvert in and then the fire shut us down and we were not able to get the crane schedule in to set the pipe. So that vendor has kind of a lean on the project and it really, it affects the project, it affects my work, it affects my bidding, it, but it is, it's a standard thing. It's just, ugh. Mm -hmm. So try, try, try to just get contractors that have really good credit. I mean, we have really good credit, but it's just things have really changed in the last year. So just be aware of that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. We have another question. Sure. Do you, have any, um, do you have any recommendations for fish habitat restoration projects using large wood structures, but unable to use large boulders for ballast at the project site? Can um, uh, can they be keyed in? I would I would hope that they could be keyed in, um, and in, into the stream banks. I, I'm I'm really an advocate for uh, having it all naturally done. So keying it in where <clears throat> the right size wood is it a natural natural size wood for the system? Can it be keyed in? Um, a lot of a lot of the the engineers are putting. Um, rebar in and, and bolt, we bolt a lot of wood. I can't, I'd rather bolt wood than cable wood, but sometimes we cable wood. I, I hate seeing the mess of cable down the river, but if you can, if there's any way to key it in, um, excavating it in al along the riverbanks, that's, that's surely the way to go. No cables, yucky, yucky cables. <laughs> Okay, I don't see any other questions. Do, uh, we have a couple more minutes, though, if anyone wants to add any additional questions in the Q&A. Someone asked, um, I think in response to the last question, how large of structures are they? In a certain count, and we've used six foot untreated wooden posts to stabilize our structures. It came in the chat, so other folks wouldn't have seen. Yeah, it. I see that. How large are the structures? Um, depends on. The, it definitely depends on the system. Um, 
Boy, we've installed lots of, I guess I'd need to know a little bit more about the site and the, how much water you got going through or um, what's the purpose of them. There's like this plethora of questions that can come through just with that. But um, uh, like the tootle structures, those, those things were a good 100 feet wide um, and each and maybe 40 feet deep. Um, and but other, we've been in Minnesota County, so I know, I know some of the the neighborhoods over there. Uh, it all it all kind of it just varies, depends on the the size of the system. Okay. There's one more question, and then we'll move on to the next presentation. Uh, where in relation to Mount St. Helens was the Tootley River project? It looks very familiar. <laughs> Yeah, too. Um, so let's see. Uh, the if you're familiar with the Tootle, we accessed through Eco Park, and there's a there's an access road right above Eco Park that goes down. It's a gated road. Um, the Army Corps. Do, so it's above the sediment uh, retention structure. Dam, which actually I worked on that also. Uh, we we raised that and made like little fish ladder things. Although the Fish and Wildlife Service has a another fish thing below the SRS, but it's above the SRS um, and it's across from Eco Park and below um, the visitor center. Amazing project. Gotta walk it. Seeing it year after year is amazing. Great. Thank you so much, Kim. Right on. Well, thanks a bunch for asking me to hang out with you guys today. Yeah, thanks for joining us. No rebar, no cables. Woohoo! I see that.